do you do you agree that an increased level of trust in ai would be directly uh, you know would directly lead to an increased adoption in ai I completely agree. Not not much to add. The only thing I was thinking when you were talking about that, Rohit, I was thinking it's a bit like banking the unbanked, and it's the same thing. It's quite a good a good analogy in my mind, anyway. When I was listening to what you were saying, because when people don't trust banks, nobody will, will, will use banks. You can see this in a lot of high cash cash economies, or even you know, hundred years ago in, in more advanced economies, people didn't want to use banks, they didn't want to use ATMs, they didn't want to use credit cards, right? Because cash was still king. But when people under when people trusted banks, they saw that you know, then regulation came in, and they understood yeah, yeah. that actually, so their money was True. protected. Then you know online banking boomed, right? I mean, and this and this is the thing. So when you trust it, it drives adoption. And trust is, I, and this is what you know, it, it's internal trust. Can we trust it? Can we use it? But also the trust of the customer. And I think, you know, from a customer perspective, AI. If you don't understand something, you can't trust it. This this is the the, the 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 key thing. And we've got to do a better job of of making, you know. People understand what data we need, how we're going to use it, and make sure we use it, you know, fairly and ethically. And once we bring that trust in, we're absolutely going to drive, you know, the adoption um, of AI. But it does take time, and it does mean you've got to have clarity and some legislation around it, so people feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable with somebody, you don't want to spend time with them. You don't want to use those services and equipment, and that's key. And the, the an interesting one that was in the newspaper this week. Um, you know, was about, again, the old trusty phone and was about FaceTime. And, and I, I didn't realize, you know, um, there's a feature hidden in there. That if I'm looking at a screen over here, my eyes will still look you uh, in the face. That terrified people um, because they just didn't understand how it worked. Yeah. And that's where yeah. we have to now start to explain to people what we're doing in the industry, <laughs> why it's important. And people don't understand that without AI, they can't have the services they want to use. So, uh, yeah. and I always explain, imagine if you're a really great gamer and you're, and you're doing, you know, and you're doing a competition and, you know, you're, you're, I don't know, one of these, I don't play computer games, but you see these people kind of like shooting each other or riding cars or whatever. Well, what about if, if, cause your internet connection was no good, you couldn't participate in that game and you lost and people do this. This is where people have to, now if you explain it to a gamer like that, they go, now I know why I need AI. <laughs>